Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we'll be exploring the, the classical Irish data set with a key nearest neighbor classifier. Uh, so if we go quickly just look at the data, uh, you can if you just google Irish data set and go to this machine learning repository, it's quite easy to download in this data folder. Uh, I believe specifically it is this one that you want to download. Uh, and so it's a quite a quite small data set. You have uh, three different species or or flowers, and uh, for each of them, they have measured a a, a sepal length and a sepal width, as well as a petal length and a petal width. Now, don't ask me what the difference between those two are, because I have no clue. But either way, uh, and. So if we look at the data set quickly from Wikipedia, this is how it looks like. We have, uh, just as we, see, we just said, that we have sample length and width and the petal length and width. And then we also have the, uh, the species that this specific, that this specific uh, example belongs to. And we have three species in total. Uh, so let's get started. We, uh, we first want to uh, import all that we need and we we need the uh, pandas as pd numpy as np we want to import the time um, because uh, we want to check just how quickly does our classifier run and uh, a little bit of cheat is that we from sk learn we we can have a um, we have the train test split which takes our data and uh, splits it uh, for to a training set and a test set and we can choose just how that percentage is I believe we use 70% on the training set 30% on the test set uh, in this example um, and so first we uh, we load the data uh, with the panda.read uh, CSV uh, this iris.data file we use none as a header and um, and then we also want to use uh, these ones uh, as names to header names. Uh, so we have the simple length, simple width, etc. Et so that we have uh, our data essentially. I'm no expert in pandas. Uh, this is just what I googled and, and used. Um, you could also just from SK Learn, you can just load Iris in, uh, directly. You don't even have to do this. But it was I, I figured it was good practice, and uh, so as I said, I'm no <laughs> I'm no expert in pandas by by any means. This is quite uh, quite dirty. So we have uh, we have data that species right. We have iris, setosa, etc. But we don't want as a as a string value. We want to make it as an integer. So what I do is that I I, I uh, make all the species that are just this specific one. Uh, and I make it as an integer since it, this will be a boolean value uh, it will be true for the first ones uh, and uh, we make it as an integer so it will be 1 all of them will be 1's uh, and then we multiply by 1 it will make sense, wait a second and we do the exact same thing for the other species except that we multiply by 2 instead of multiply by 1 and uh, for the last one same thing, we check all the data in that column species that are just a specific class. We make it as an integer, we multiply by 3, and so what we get is, is instead of having these string values is that we have 1, 2, 3 as our classes, which makes uh, that are like if we have integer values, then our Canadian uh, neighbor classifier can actually run. Uh, and then we we have our data, but we want to separate into a um, you know a x which has all the features and y that has our our labels. Um, yeah, so if we we just do x dot head, we get this right. It has it doesn't say which class it belongs to, just the the features of that of that specific flower, uh, that example of that flower, I should say. And on our y uh, or y or our labels, we have um, for the first ones we have a one 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 right for, because all of those were on the iris setosa. 
which are all now labeled as ones. And here what we do is that we uh, we use the train test split from sklearn and we, we split x and y uh, with a test set of 30%, so 0.3 and uh, yeah and then we um, since this is a, a panda data frame we need to to use mp.array on those so that it's actually a in like a numpy matrix and then just quickly, we, we see how, how large our train set is. We print the X train shape and Y train shape. Uh, and we see that, you know, we have 105 training examples for the training set and uh, 45 on the test set. All right, so that, that's it. That's for data. Let's let's look at the, uh, the key and age neighbor classifier, which is really what we want to, to learn uh, how, how it works. So I made it as a class. And uh, what we do is that we first have a, a an init, and we just say that okay, uh, self dot k is k. So that's the, the the k nearest neighbor. So I don't know if you're familiar. I can just quickly. Uh, it's quite intuitive actually. So if you have let's say uh, if you have let's say two classes. So you have uh, squares, which are orange, like this. And uh, let's say that you have um, you have cir uh, circles, so you have circles here, all right. And then let's say that you have an um, an unknown star here that you want to to see w which one is it. It's it's one of the two, but we want to figure out which is this, uh, like which class does this unknown star belong to. And what we do is that we, we calculate distances. Um, I mean, first of all, it, it's quite intuitive that this is probably one of the, the squares rather than one of the circles because it's closest, right? But how we do that is by, by looking at all the distances to all the other that, that we already know. And then we see, okay, but which ones are actually the closest? Well, in this case, these ones are actually the closest. And uh, how we can do that, the, the, the significance of the K is that we look, well, okay, we want to f see, let's say that K is equal to three. Then we, we check, okay, which ones are the, uh, the three closest ones? And uh, I believe, let's see, these three would probably be the three closest ones. And so, all these three classes, right, k equals three, are all squares. So it's most likely, not not guaranteed, but most likely that this one is also uh, wait, it's also a square. So that's how the k nearest neighbor classifier works, just intuitively. Uh, and so if we step back to the code, we just uh, self k self dot k is equal to k, which is the decided on the user. That uses the the classifier, uh, and then we have a we define a training. Uh, this isn't uh, in the comment here. It, it's not really a we don't have a training time in Kinesh Neighbor because what we what we do is that we just okay we load the entire data into memory. So there's no training part, but it's just good practice to to view it that way. N normally in neural networks we have a training uh, training step or whatever. So we just load our x and our y into self.xtrain, self.yTrain. There's really nothing going on here. And here is, uh, we come to the interesting part where we have, um, we need to compute the distances between that unknown, uh, the unknown star to all of the other ones. And so the intuitive thing is just to have two loops. We, we check how many, how many test examples do we have, how many stars. And how many knowns do we have? How many squares? How many circles? And then the distances will just be, well, it will be for each star, right? For each star, there will be for uh, to all other examples that we have already stored in memory. So that, that will be distances. And how we do that here is just a, the, the trivial two loops way of doing it. So for each star or for each training, uh, for each test example, 
we loop through all of our training examples and we compute a distance, a Euclidean distance to be specific. So we take that x, uh, the, the test example uh, minus our training example uh, squared and then the square root of that. So that's the Euclidean distance. And we just do that for all our unknown stars and all our knowns in the training set. Now, one can uh, figure out that this is quite ineffective since we have loops. And what we really want to have is, uh, is a vectorized way of doing this. So here below is a vectorized way of computing this, the, the distances. And I can, uh, we do the same thing. We, we check how many, how many test examples do we have that we want to figure out the label of and how many training do we have and then we just com we make a, a zero va uh, zero matrix the, that we call dists and then w we can realize that okay what we want to have is the Euclidean distance which is the square root of x test minus x train squared and if, if we um, if we on um, um, if we simplify or if we do this multiplication uh, this, uh, this square then we have that x test is squared minus 2 times x test x train plus x train squared uh, and this holds for matrices as well we just need to make sure that the dimensions are, are accurate so what we do is that we have the x test squared uh, we take just take uh, we take the, the sum and uh, we take them squared so um, and similarly for the x train squared right that makes sense mm. yeah okay yeah and then and then we have to this makes sense because th this last part is that we have we need to take minus two times x test x train but what we have to do is that we have to take a transpose of this x train because uh, let's say we have all the examples and features uh, and then we want to times it by the we want to times it by um, x train which has examples dot features but we take the transpose so we have features dot examples and if we do this matrix multiply we'll get examples comma examples uh, which makes sense because these, these examples are examples uh, test and these are examples train so that each example of our test is has a a, uh, a row which has each uh, known in our training uh, training set that we already stored in memory okay so then we just we we take the, the square root of that uh, just the x test squared minus 2x test x train plus x train squared and then we return the, the distances and lastly what we do in the in the k nearest neighbor we have to all right we have the distances right we have the arrows from the star to all our others but we need to be able to predict which one the star actually belongs to and so we first take uh, yeah, we check how many unknowns do we have, how many stars, uh, and uh, we say that our predictions for that one will be a zero vector, which is as many as our uh, the unknowns that we want to figure out, and then we just loop for each of the unknowns. We first check, okay, uh, this mp.argsort, sort it uh, it sorts it in um, it it returns the indexes which are the that are associated to the smallest element. So for that specific, in that matrix, for that, uh, for that one that is unknown, and we look to all of our training examples, and then we, we sort it and see how, what are the indexes associated with the, with the lowest values. And that gets stored to Y indices. And then we need to check, okay, but which ones are, uh, are the closest? So, uh, in self of y train self of y train let's see yeah okay these are the knowns uh, we look at y indices up to a specific k that we that we started with that we just 
the, the, the user sent in. Um, and remember, the, 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 this is in uh, sorted, uh, these, these are indexes that correspond to the lowest values, so the shortest distances. And so we, we just look, okay, uh, we look to the, to um, k of that y indices, and then we look which which class did it actually belong to, which we know already with, that we that we just stored in memory in y train, uh, and that's that will be stored in closest y, and then what we do that we just count, okay, how how many uh, of the different classes was closest. And then we take the, the the maximum of those. So let's say that there was, um, if we go back to the picture, let's say that we had a, uh, let's make another one right here. If we say that we had um, two squares and we had an unknown star and then we had a circle here and we took k equals three. Well, it will be these three that are the closest, since we only have three in this case. Um, but the one that it, we would most likely pick is the, the square, because those are the closest. We can even add more circles here. But we would still pick it to be a, a square, most likely. And so what we need to take is the maximum of, of those, which is the square. And that's what we do here. And then what we have, we store it in a uh, in this vector here, and the y corresponds to that specific test example that we that we don't know. Okay, so now we've stepped through the entire Kinyurst. Let's just do it on uh, on the Irish data set. So we start by taking the time just to see how, how quickly it runs. And first, we we instance uh, we what is it called? We we call the class with k equals twelve in this case. Uh, this is a uh, parameter that you can choose to be whatever an experiment. Which one is the best? And then we do classifier dot train. So we send in our our training set, and we compute the distances using our classifier, which uh, we looked at the vectorized one. This one. And uh, from that we get our y test uh, predictions. And then what we do is that we just look, okay, how many did we actually get right? We look at the sum of the ones that our predictions were actually equal to the y test. And then we do a, a accuracy. So what's our accuracy on, uh, uh, on uh, these tests, the, 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 the test set? So we, we just uh, do a float, number of correct divided by the total uh, examples in our test set. And then we print accuracy on the test set and end time, and the time took end time minus start time. Okay, so we can see here about 97.7% .7 accuracy. I don't know if that's the best, but it's a quite small data set, so I, it seems decent. And uh, And then we, um, yeah, so we, we can see here that it's quite fast. This is the vectorized one. And if we want to, just for fun, we can check, okay, well, how fast does it run if we use the two loops one? And we see that, okay, it's about, uh, I don't know, it's quite a bit slower, which is uh, expected. But it re returns the exact same uh, accuracy. So that, that gives a hint that we have actually implemented it correctly. All right, that, that's, I believe that's it for uh, the Iris data set with the k neighbor classifier. So thank you for listening and uh, see you next time.